At night in a building, robbers are carrying out their actions. They are named Miles and Eddie who are seen breaking through the building's ventilation shaft. They are assisted by a man named Deacon who observes conditions in the building through CCTV cameras. Meanwhile, a man named Tully is in charge of monitoring road conditions from inside the car. After successfully breaking through the ventilation duct, Miles and Eddie immediately went down to start their action. The two robbers then headed to the safe where the object they were looking for was kept. But it looks like they need a bigger effort to be able to break into the safe. Because it turns out to be the strongest safe in the world. But not Miles if he can't complete his mission. He even had to work alone because Eddie had to go back to the roof of the building to wait. Armed with a drill, Miles who managed to make a hole in the surface of the safe, is finally able to unlock the safe. The happiness is very visible on Miles' face who finally managed to see a large diamond that is worth up to $17 million. At the same time, Eddie, who managed to return to the roof of the building, was even surprised by Deacon's attitude who suddenly pointed his gun at him. Very arrogantly, Deacon said if he did not want to split the diamond between the four of them. Not long after, a bullet shot towards Eddie which sent him flying off the roof of the building. Unfortunately, Eddie's body fell on top of the patrol car which spontaneously made the conditions there chaotic. Tully, who didn't want to get into that big trouble, finally decided to run away from there. Meanwhile, Miles, who is ready to grab the diamond, is ordered by Deacon to immediately complete his mission and return to the roof, because the police are already headed for the building. Swiftly Miles then ran away from there and returned to meet Deacon on the roof of the building, but after arrival at the roof of the building, he is not greeted warmly by Deacon for his success in stealing diamonds. He is immediately held at gunpoint by Deacon and asks him to hand over the diamond to him. Miles, who feels he is working more in the action, certainly doesn't want to give up his diamonds. An act of attraction then occurs between them, but in the end, Deacon managed to get it along with the arrival of the police helicopter that had arrived there. They then left the place. Ridiculously Miles, who had been hanging from a rope, was thrown into a building that was under construction. But luckily, he was still able to escape from Deacon's pursuit after hiding in the air vents. Don't lose his mind. Miles also stashes the stolen diamond in the lining of the air vents. Finally he was caught by the police. But during the arrest, he was able to pay close attention to the details of the location where the diamond was kept. Two years later, Miles is now released after serving time in prison for the robbery he committed. He, who had missed his lover in prison, finally decided to go to the house of his lover named Janice. Miles, who hopes to get affection from her, instead gets a refusal from her, who turns out to already know Miles' background, which so far has only been a robber. Even though he had argued that he was now converted, but still Janice no longer wanted to see him who had claimed to work as a bank employee. His bad luck didn't stop there. The building that used to be the place where the stolen diamonds were kept is now standing strong. But apparently he couldn't just sneak in and get the diamond back. Because the building, which was still under construction, has now become a police station. But Miles doesn't give up just because of that problem. He is now back at the police station disguised as a pizza delivery man with a strange appearance and demeanor, so that he is no longer recognized as an ex-convict. He then manages to break into the police station, but unfortunately, the officials there forbade him to enter freely to any location he wanted. Additionally, not police officer there is known to have ordered pizza, but Miles doesn't lose his head. He found an officer who was going into another room. His name is Carlson. Then he immediately left all the pizzas he brought with the excuse that he did not believe in having to leave the pizzas to the officers who intercepted him. Unexpectedly, that action just a strategy by him to target Carlson's ID card. The next day, he then goes to one of his friends named Uncle Lou to ask him to produce an identification card like Carlson's, complete with a fake file that proves that he is the detective who was transferred to the police station. He said he did it because the ventilation duct where he kept the diamond two years ago was in the detective's room. Preparations are then made. Not only by Uncle Lou, Miles also looks quite fun when imitating some of the actions of police officers that he watches from documentaries. It didn't take long, Uncle Lou, who was used to falsifying documents, could easily make them according to Miles' orders. But he also advised that the file should not be checked by the police because they will easily know the authenticity of the document. Miles, who heard it, looked indifferent and slightly underestimated the message. In front of the police station, Miles, who had brought his paperwork and identification card, now looked very confident and began to enter the police station without feeling awkward. He also headed straight for a ventilation shaft which he believes led to his diamond vault. But it seems that only one access is to get to the ventilation duct, and it's located in the women's toilet. At the same time, Carlson is interrogating a criminal. There the criminal asked him to loosen the handcuffs a little. Carlson, who was so innocent, even complied with the request which was then used by the criminal to escape. Coincidentally, the criminal who was trying to escape ended up hiding in the women's toilet. Miles, who at that time had already opened the ventilation door, was forced to abandon his intention. The funny thing is, at first he just wanted to silence the criminal by kicking the toilet door instead making the criminal fall. 
the action actually makes him under scrutiny from the other police officers who arrive there. Inevitably, he ends up introducing himself as Malone who is the new transfer detective in that place. The police chief named Rizzo also felt awkward with the open ventilation door, but Malone managed to convince him by saying that the criminal wanted to escape through the ventilation. For some reason, Rizzo could just believe it. Unfortunately, Malone, who initially hoped that he could get a place as a staff member at the police station, was instead placed in the theft case division along with Carlson which would definitely require him to do more work in the field. Rizzo argued that Malone's assignment was intended to be a partner for Carlson. Like it or not, Miles obeys his orders. In his first assignment, Malone with Carlson headed to an auto repair shop. Following reports of theft, the, the repair shop owner revealed that he had just lost three dozen expensive wheels worth $5,000 each but not with other wheels that are cheaper. Unfortunately, the alarm at the workshop also didn't turn on when the theft occurred. It made Carlson have to think hard to be able to uncover the theft. Different from Malone who is basically a thief, he does not need much analysis to reveal the theft. He actually has his own point of view. Just by imagining if he was the culprit of the thief, there he said that three dozen wheels with heavy loads would take a long time to move them, and coincidentally Malone suspects the truck belongs to the repair shop. And that's right, Malone's hunch about the workshop owner as the culprit himself was finally proven by the discovery of three dozen expensive wheels in the truck. He and Carlson finally solved their first case. On the way home, Malone, who had been irritated by the way Carlson was driving, then took control by driving the car. He seemed so happy to be driving that police car, especially when he is disguised as a detective, he feels above the law and can drive as he pleases. In the middle of the trip, Carlson saw a car hit the hydrant, then decided to approach him but not with Malone who prefers to look for headache medicine at the mini market. Unfortunately, he even caught an armed robbery that suddenly came and asked for money at the cashier. The cashier who wanted to defend himself immediately took out his gun. Finally there was a shooting action that could not be avoided by Malone. Carlson, who heard the gunshots, then contacted his office. On the other hand, Malone was looking so relaxed while enjoying a snack at the shop. Such action was already a familiar sight to behold. Ridiculously, the perpetrator of the robbery turned out to be a Tully. It was a reunion moment for them. Malone, who did not want his disguise to be exposed, then asked Tully to run away immediately. They then fled to the back door, but police cars have also arrived there, and finally he was caught in the middle of a police siege. Under these conditions, Malone, who did not want any bigger problems, finally took the initiative to negotiate with him. He gamely proceeds to court Tully and offers a deal for him to turn himself into the police. He orders Tully not to reveal his cover by promising some money so he will obey Malone. When the deal was made, he engineered the scene of him beating Tully to the ground to make it look like a professional cop making an arrest. Oh, oh, Jesus. I sure don't know me anymore. Malone's heroics immediately became the talk of the town. However, it is also what made Rizzo begin to highlight his identity, especially the documents. Although initially there was question about his previous achievement history, however, because the police still needed staff in the theft division, Malone was now given a new position as chief detective in the theft division, especially with his extraordinary action in catching robbers at the mini market. Not wanting to lose himself in the profession any longer, he starts down the ventilation ducts in search of the diamond, but bad luck, he only found a piece of tape still attached to the inside wall of the ventilation duct. On the other hand, at Uncle Lou's place, Deacon comes to ask where Miles is. Although Uncle Lou had argued that he had not seen Miles for a long time, Deacon found a copy of the police identification card ordered by Miles. At the same time, Malone, who was still curious about the whereabouts of the diamond, now used a remote control car to go through all the ventilation ducts. When Malone followed the direction of the toy car, he instead entered the meeting room which coincidentally was also being held by all the officers. Their Rizzo was conducting the event. Finally Malone inevitably introduced himself in front of other officers. Uniquely, the versatile Malone was also able to answer the audience's questions in his own way. He received applause full of admiration from all the officers there. In his office, Malone returned to search his diamond, but suddenly appeared Carlson who came just like that. Not only shocked by his arrival, Malone was also panicked because it turned out that Carlson's arrival was to confirm his personal files which could not be found in all police data, including the badge number, and again the ridiculous action is carried out again. Malone, who is very good at arguing and boasting about anything, can easily convince Carlson that he is a super cop assigned in secret to uncover massive corruption cases that have occurred in the office. With a little threat to put Carlson in the traffic police, Malone finally managed to convince Carlson. At the same time, Rizzo approached him and gave him a new assignment to investigate cases of theft of ancient objects in airport cargo. Like it or not, he must immediately go to the crime scene. Arriving at the airport, Malone was involved in a dispute with Gray who was an FBI agent. 
Their Milan felt something was wrong after seeing ancient objects that had been damaged. That's what made him so sure the time case was not about the theft of ancient objects, but the case of smuggling of prohibited goods under the guise of selling ancient objects. Malone, who is basically an accomplished robber, clearly knows the motives behind the dealer's actions. He then rushed to find the whereabouts of the truck he believed was transporting evidence. Thanks to the help of a helicopter, the police finally managed to find a truck that turned out to be loaded with prohibited goods. The action does not end there. Malone also had to catch up with the truck driver who fled along with their ambush. Finally, the hilarious pursuit of Malone happened again. In the evidence storage room, Malone, who was increasingly curious about the diamond, finally started to search again. His feelings turned full of happiness when he finally found the diamond he had been looking for all this time, but luck doesn't seem to him side. He is suddenly surprised by the arrival of Rizzo who spontaneously causes the diamond to fall and tucked into a pile of prohibited goods. Unfortunately again, it turns out that all the evidence will be taken to the FBI headquarters for further investigation. It turned out that all the items belonged to a high-profile kingpin named Jean Lafleur who for the last five years had been a target for the FBI, and the evidence is planned to be investigated further. Malone, who did not want to lose his diamonds, then suggested to Rizzo that all the items should be kept at the police station so they could lure him, but bad luck. Gray even appointed Malone to disguise himself as a drug driver in the ambush this time. He, who at first did not want to volunteer in the action, finally could only surrender and accept the task. Considering he doesn't want to lose his diamond again either, preparations are made. Gray gave instructions to Malone about his duties including with his body language and behavior which should reflect that of a true criminal. But it seems that this is not something that is difficult for him who is actually a robber. The trip was carried out under FBI and police surveillance. But it turns out that out there, Deacon is also ready to follow him. Arriving at the promised location, instead of staying in the truck as directed, he got off and entered the cargo cabin to collect the diamonds. Ridiculously, when he managed to grab the diamond, he was even surprised by the arrival of Tully who was also stalking him. Not only that, the moment when Malone and Tully met felt more like a reunion. Suddenly Deacon also appeared and immediately pointed his gun and asked for the diamond back. At the same time, a big shock occurred in the cabin because it turned out that the truck was being lifted using a crane and directed exactly to the syndicate's location. There, Malone, Tully and Deacon must now come face to face with Jean Lafleur. Unfortunately, Deacon, who had been treacherous all this time, instead told the drug dealer that Malone was a member of the police who was currently carrying out an undercover operation. Lafleur, who heard this, tried to find out the truth by giving Malone a gun to shoot the Deacon to prove that he was not a policeman. Malone, who had been bothered and irritated by Deacon, of course shot his arm without hesitation. But it seems that Lafleur is not satisfied with that because all he wants is to kill Deacon. Like it or not, Malone had to be prepared to serve his request. Luckily, when he was ready to shoot Deacon, at the same time a group of police appeared who spontaneously dispersed the crowd of criminals there, including with Deacon who also fled with diamonds using a police car. A car chase ensued. During the action, the police and FBI were made difficult because it turned out that the car brought by Deacon actually crossed the Mexican border. In other words, they would not have the authority to arrest Deacon and would not even be allowed to cross the borders of the two countries. Malone, who is actually only Miles, is a robber and not a policeman, and is very obsessed with getting his diamond back, finally having the courage to break through the border and ignore all the existing rules. With a smoke bomb shot, he finally succeeded in overturning the car driven by Deacon and continued with the action of pointing guns at each other to fight over the diamonds. The funny thing is, Malone's action this time was even again seen by the police as a negotiation he was doing just like before. Then he handcuffed Deacon's hands, but Deacon did not accept this treatment so he then fired a small shot aimed at him. Luckily Malone, who was increasingly trained in using weapons, could easily counterattack Deacon and kill him. All action full of controversy that certainly invites attention. One of them was an FBI regional leader named Peterson who questioned him's reckless actions. This also made Rizzo even more curious about the detective's origins. Malone's data has also been untraceable in the American police database. Ridiculously, he now argued that he was a member of the Mexican Federals who had been tasked with spying on Lafleur's crimes. He even had time to say farewell chattering in Latin while leading the police group there. Not long after, Carlson with Detective Hardcastle then caught up with him who was currently at the border. Surprisingly, Carlson, who had always seemed innocent, innocent and easily deceived by Malone, already knew Malone's true identity and motives. He even revealed Malone's real name, named Miles Logan and all this time posing as a detective in his office just to be able to get back the diamond he stole. Hearing that, Miles immediately panicked because he never thought that Carlson would reveal his disguise all this time. It is also what makes Hardcastle detectives intend to arrest Miles right then and there. But it seems that luck is really on Miles' side this time. 
because he seems to be protected by the bureaucracy of the two countries. Because it turns out that he is standing on the mainland of Mexico right in front of the border between the two countries. Finally Miles can waddle casually leave the place while kissing his diamond. And the movie ends.